A couple of weeks ago I told you about my new plans of sailing south from France and that I felt it required a little more safety equipment. Now it was time to fix that. I put the life raft on the boat even before leaving Sweden, so that's one thing that I'm really really happy I did. But uh, I also, uh, for example, want an Ifrit and I actually ordered one, but uh, this is France, so you kind of, you never know how long it's going to take for something to arrive. Well, uh, after two weeks, Kronenpost finally decided they could actually deliver my parcel. Um, I'm not sure if I should be really thankful or not, but uh, thank God the supplier helped me out a lot to call Kronenpost like every day to make sure they actually gonna go here with it. But let's open. They're waiting a long time. Okay, well, yes, here it is, finally. So an important piece of uh, emergency equipment and uh, for those of you who doesn't know this, um, it is um, it's a part of the emergency equipment on the boat that can actually position you with a satellite and send an emergency message if you are um, having like the total disaster, like if you have to abandon your boat or if it's burning or something. And if you don't want to rely only on calling on the VHF radio, this also helps people to actually find where you are. It's expensive. But I think it's like an insurance. If you pay for it, you expect to never use it, but you feel safer having it. And if something happens, then it's going to be a lifesaver. This one is also programmed uh, with the same uh, MMSI number as you have on your uh, radio. If you have a, a radio with DSE. So um, I think that's why it's looks like it's been opened before and then you have to register it in the country that you have your boat registered and where you have your radio license that is <laughs> i can't open and talk at the same time that's a bit uh... oh um okay lots of papers mm. details manuel in France, let's pick a pro user manual, service record uh, papers, and voila, here it is. And um, there are a few different brands on those. I chose the uh, Ocean Signal, which I've heard good things about. And they're also, you can have them manual or automatic, and they can come in a case that deploys if it got into gets into water but then it means i cannot have it inside because like then it has nowhere to deploy so it's it's important it doesn't go down with the boat uh if the boat sinks because then it can't send its signal of course and that you also place it someplace where you can easily grab it if you have to go in the life raft because you need to take this with you so they can find you and this one has a good uh, mounting not uh, all the brands has a mounting included so i'm just gonna find a way uh, close to the companion way and um, put it there. A very compact convenient size on this one as well. But first uh, I'm gonna have some lunch and I found out a really new recipe. It's like couscous with pesto and avocado and tomatoes. Very very simple but awesome. I forgot to tell you another important thing. I'm looking at my papers here that comes with it for the registration and the programming um, but one important thing about choosing actually this one is that it has 10 years of battery life um, compared to some other ones that only has seven because changing the battery is expensive that's not something you can do yourself um, so 10 years in front of seven or five years that makes a lot of a difference and I think also in 10 years from now um, it probably happens so much with safety features and stuff like that, so I'm not even sure it's going to be an epirb anymore. Um, so it's, it's definitely gonna, gonna last as long as I, I need this. So, yeah, I got my paper with my address, my uh, serial number and my uh, um, country code and uh, um, 
yeah, all the information that is actually gonna send in in case of an emergency. So now I'm gonna uh, go to. I think I can do the registry online. I hope so. I'm gonna check it out at least. Let's get my computer. Okay. In Sweden, I mean this is different in in all different countries, but in in Sweden. We register at uh, post, uh, post and Television Council. I don't know, that sounded like a very strange translation. E services. That sounds promising. We have collected the services that could make an ease for you. Mm -hmm. Radio. Allowance for a VHF radio in a leisure boat. I'm confused. It says here I have to call the GRCC. I don't understand if I have to do both or only that. Oh, you can do it by email, apparently. That's good. It's a form you have to fill in. I'm gonna continue my lunch while I do this. The Elas Flight School is that something we like, right? Another thing I want to do uh, before I go out sailing more is uh, to have a check on the chain plates and uh, on this boat they are behind here so there is uh, first uh, some screws to loosen on this side and the rest of the screws are inside of, uh, of the locker here so I'm just gonna lean inside and loosen them. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty good. As you can see, there is no particular rust. It's it's uh, dry up here. It's been raining a lot the last couple of days, so it's very good to see now that it's uh, super dry behind here. There is no leaks, nothing like that. So everything looks pretty good. And there is, uh, of course, two sides to this. So even if it looks good on one side, it's not obvious that it's going to look equally good on the other side. So I'm going to take this one off as well. And if you wonder why you check on those things, I mean, this is a vital part of the boat. So if, if they are bad, you can actually drop the mast. That's not something you want to happen. Yeah, it's uh, looking equally good on, the, on this side. No signs of water, no rust. So, good to have it uh, checked. This was actually one of the things that uh, when I bought the boat, uh, I don't know if you remember or if you've seen those episodes, but I had a surveyor, but he didn't even open and check on those. I want to deeply thank my Patreons for supporting the making of these episodes. And if you want to contribute, you can also become a Patreon or buy me a coffee at the links below. If you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out. 
And if you appreciated this episode, please give it a big thumbs up.